Mrs. Beaton's Book of Household Management, also published as Mrs. Beaton's Cookery Book, is an extensive guide to running a household in Victorian Britain, edited by Isabella Beaton and first published as a book in 1861. It had previously been published in parts. It was originally entitled Beaton's Book of Household Management, as one of the series of guide books published by her husband, Samuel Beaton. The recipes were highly structured, in contrast to earlier cookbooks. It was illustrated with many monochrome and color plates. Although Mrs. Beaton died in 1865, the book continued to be a bestseller. The first editions after her death contained an obituary notice, but this was removed from later editions, allowing readers to imagine that every word was written by an experienced Mrs. Beaton personally. This fiction was expressed in one of Arthur Conan Doyle's novels, where a character declares. Mrs. Beaton must have been the finest housekeeper in the world, therefore Mr. Beaton must have been the happiest and most comfortable man." Many of the recipes were copied from the most successful cookery books of the day including Eliza Acton's Modern Cookery for Private Families, Elizabeth Rafal's The Experienced English Housekeeper, Marie Antoine Carmes' La Pâtissier Royal Parisian, Hannah Glass's The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy, Maria Eliza Rundle's A New System of Domestic Cookery, and the works of Charles Elmay Francatelli. This practice of Mrs. Beaton's has in modern times repeatedly been described as plagiarism. The book expanded steadily in length, until by 1907 it reached 74 chapters and over 2,000 pages. Nearly two million copies were sold by 1868, and it remains in print as of 2016. Between 1875 and 1914 it was probably the most often consulted cookery book. Mrs. Beaton has been compared on the strength of the book with modern domestic goddesses like Nigella Lawson and Delia Smith. Topic history The author, Isabella Beaton, was 21 years old when she started working on the book. It was initially serialized in 24 monthly installments, in her husband Samuel Orchard Beaton's publication The English Woman's Domestic Magazine. The first installment appeared in 1859. On 1 October 1861, the installments were collected into one volume with the title The Book of Household Management, comprising information for the mistress, housekeeper, cook, kitchen maid, butler, footman, coachman, valet, upper and under housemaids, ladies' maid, maid of all work, laundry maid, nurse and nurse maid, monthly wet and sick nurses, etc. etc., also sanitary, medical, and legal memoranda, with a history of the origin, properties, and uses of all things connected with home life and comfort, in its preface she wrote, I must frankly own, that if I had known, beforehand, that this book would have cost me the labor which it has, I should never have been courageous enough to commence it. What moved me, in the first instance, to attempt a work like this, was the discomfort and suffering which I had seen brought upon men and women by household mismanagement. I have always thought that there is no more fruitful source of family discontent than a housewife's badly cooked dinners and untidy ways. Beaton's half-sister, Lucy Smiles, was later asked about her memories of the book's development. She recalled, different people gave their recipes for the book. That for Baroness Pudding, a suet pudding with a plethora of raisins, was given by the Baroness de Tessier, who lived at Epsom. No recipe went into the book without a successful trial, and the home at Pinner was the scene of many experiments and some failures. I remember Isabella coming out of the kitchen one day, this won't do at all, she said, and gave me the cake that had turned out like a biscuit. I thought it very good. It had currants in it. Previously published as a part work, it was first published as a book in 1861 by S. O. Beaton Publishing, 161 Bouvery Street, London, a firm founded by Samuel Beaton. The book was an immediate bestseller, selling 60,000 copies in its first year and totaling nearly 2 million by 1868. In 2010 a copy of the first edition of Household Management in Top Condition was stated to be worth more than £1,000. In 1863 a revised edition was issued. In 1866, a year after Isabella's death, Samuel was in debt due to the collapse of Overend and Gurney, a London discount house to which he owed money. To save himself from bankruptcy he sold the copyright to all of his publications for a little over £19,000. Of that, the rights to household management were sold to publishers Ward, Locke and Tyler for £3,250. The early editions included an obituary notice for Beaton, but the publishers insisted it be removed, allowing readers to imagine, perhaps even as late as 1915 that some mob-capped matriarch was out there still keeping an eye on them. Revisions to household management by its publisher have continued to the present day. 
The effort has kept the beaten name in the public eye for over 125 years, although current editions are far removed from those published in Mrs. Beaton's lifetime. By 1906 the book had 2,056 pages, exclusive of advertising, with 3,931 recipes and was half as large again as the previous edition. Book Contents The following description refers to the 1907 edition. The book was greatly extended in the decades since Mrs. Beaton's death in 1865 to 74 chapters and over 2000 pages. The first edition had 44 chapters. The book begins with general chapters on the duties of the mistress, the housekeeper, and the cook. There follow chapters on the kitchen itself, marketing, choosing good quality produce at the market, and an introduction to cookery, chapter 6. Together, these take up over 100 pages. Chapters 7 to 38 roughly 1,000 pages cover English cooking, with recipes for soups, gravies, fish, meat principally veal, beef, mutton and lamb, and pork, poultry, game, preserves, vegetables, pastries, puddings, sweets, jams, pickles, and savories. Chapter 39 describes the art of carving a table, supported by 11 illustrations. Chapters 40 to 50, some 200 pages, give instructions for dairy products, vegetarian and invalid, sick person cookery, making bread, biscuits and cakes, and beverages. Chapters 51 to 59 describe cooking in various international styles, including French, German, Spanish, Jewish, Australian, South African, Indian, American, and Canadian cookery. Chapters 60 to 68 provide guidance on matters from trussing poultry to the definitions of culinary terms, arranging meals, decorating the table, making menus and the duties of domestic servants. Chapters 69 to 73 describe household recipes and medical preparations. The final chapter, 74, offers legal memoranda. There is a detailed index. The edition includes advertisements for products such as Lemco beef extract and Cadbury's cocoa. Topic. Approach The preface sets out the book's goal of providing men with such well-cooked food at home that it may compete with what they could eat at their clubs, well-ordered taverns, and dining houses. Mrs. Beaton claims that I have attempted to give, under the chapters devoted to cookery, an intelligible arrangement to every recipe, a list of the ingredients, a plain statement of the mode of preparing each dish, and a careful estimate of its cost, the number of people for whom it is sufficient, and the time when it is seasonable. She explains that she was thus attempting to make the basics of cookery intelligible to any housewife. The first chapter sets the tone of the book with a quotation from the Book of Proverbs, and in early editions cites also the Vicar of Wakefield with The modest virgin, the prudent wife, and the careful matron, are much more serviceable in life than petticoated philosophers, blustering heroines, or virago queens. She who makes her husband and her children happy, who reclaims the one from vice and trains up the other to virtue, the book thus advocates early rising, cleanliness, frugality, good temper, and the wisdom of interviewing servants rather than relying on written references. Cookery is introduced with words about the progress of mankind from barbarism to civilization, with a mention of man in his primitive state, living upon roots and the fruits of the earth, rising to become in turn a hunter and a fisher, then a herdsman, and finally the comfortable condition of a farmer. It is granted that, "...the fruits of the earth, the fowls of the air, the beasts of the field, and the fish of the sea, are still the only food of mankind." But that these are so prepared, improved, and dressed by skill and ingenuity, that they are the means of immeasurably extending the boundaries of human enjoyments. The text then swiftly passes to a description of simple measures like a table spoonful, and the duties of servants. The whole of the rest of the book is taken up with instructions for cooking, with an introduction in each chapter to the type of food it describes. The first of these, on soups, begins. Lean, juicy beef, mutton, and veal, form the basis of all good soups, therefore it is advisable to procure those pieces which afford the richest succulents, and such as are fresh killed. 
The account of how to make soup consists of a single essay, divided into general advice and numbered steps for making any kind of meat-based soup. This is followed in early editions by a separate chapter of recipes for soups of different kinds. Each recipe is structured into a title, a list of ingredients with quantities, either natural, as a number of eggs or vegetables, a number of slices of ham, or measured in imperial units, ounces of salt, quarts of water. The actual instructions are headed, mode, as, cut up the veal, and put it with the bones and trimmings of poultry. A separate section gives the overall preparation time, and the average cost is, for example, 9d, per quart. Many recipes state in separate brief sections when a recipe is seasonable, and for how many persons it is sufficient. Finally, a note gives any required advice, as when stronger stock is desired, double the quantity of veal, or put in an old fowl. This highly structured presentation was the book's main innovation. <inaudible> Oddities Despite professing to be a guide of reliable information about every aspect of running a house for the aspirant middle classes, the original edition devotes 23 pages to household management, then discusses cooking for almost all of the other 900. Even with the emphasis on food, some of her cooking advice is so odd as to suggest that she had little experience preparing meals. For example, the book recommends boiling pasta for an hour and 45 minutes. Like many other British people of her social class and generation, Mrs. Beaton adopted a distaste for unfamiliar foods, saying that mangoes tasted like turpentine, lobsters were indigestible, garlic was offensive, potatoes were suspicious, a great many are narcotic, and many are deleterious." Cheese could only be consumed by sedentary people, and tomatoes were either good or bad for a range of reasons. Unlike earlier cookbook authors, such as Hannah Glass, the book offered an "...emphasis on thrift and economy." It also discarded the style of previous writers who employed "...daunting paragraph s of text with ingredients and method jumbled up together." For what is a recognizably modern user-friendly formula listing ingredients, method, timings and even the estimated cost of each recipe. Plagiarism In a critical letter, Mrs. Beaton's sister Mrs. Henrietta Mary Portois English advised her that Cookery is a science that is only learnt by long experience and years of study which of course you have not had. Therefore my advice would be compile a book from receipts from a variety of the best books published on cookery and heaven knows there is a great variety for you to choose from." The recipes were largely copied from the most successful cookery books of the day, the copying in some cases acknowledged in the text. The variety included Eliza Acton's Modern Cookery for Private Families and her The English Bread Book, Elizabeth Rafal's The Experienced English Housekeeper, Marie Antoine Carme's La Pâtissier Royal Parisian, Louis Eustache Oudet's The French Cook, Alexis Saar's The Modern Housewife or, Menagier and the Pantrophian, Hannah Glass's The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy, Maria Eliza Rundle's A New System of Domestic Cookery, and the works of Charles Elmay Francatelli. In modern times Mrs. Beaton's practice has been criticized as play plagiarism, Beaton's modern biographer Catherine Hughes talks of her «lifting» and «brazenly copying» recipes from others, and says that this was «the way that cookery books had been put together from time immemorial». The New York Times said, «Isabella Beaton plagiarized only the best». This led to the comment that «Mrs. Beaton couldn't cook but she could copy». Hughes recounts that Beaton's First recipe for Victoria Sponge was so inept that she left out the eggs, and that her work was brazenly copied almost word for word from books as far back as the Restoration. The influential 20th century food writer Elizabeth David dismissed her as a plagiarist and later wrote, I wonder if I would have ever learned to cook at all if I had been given a routine Mrs. Beaton to learn from. Illustrations 
The 1907 edition runs to some 30 full-page color plates, and over 100 full-page illustrations in monochrome. These include photographs, such as of the housekeeper standing with hands behind her back in her kitchen pictured, facing the first page of Chapter 2, The Housekeeper. An idea of the amount of detail may be gained from the fact that there are 11 illustrations of types of fish one pictured, such as steamed sole, and soused mackerel, and another of fish entrees. One full-page color plate pictured illustrated a range of puddings, showing jelly, raspberry cream, a center dish piled high with fruits, a trifle, and an ornamental flower pot containing a strawberry plant. Another full-page color plate pictured showed a variety of fruits including apricots, white and black cherries, white, red and black currants, a melon, strawberries and varieties of plums, all piled high on circular dishes or fruit stands. Influence and legacy Contemporary The preface of Wilhelmina Rawson's Queensland Cookery and Poultry Book 1878, published in Australia, observes that, "...Mrs. Lance Rawson's Cookery Book is written entirely for the colonies, and for the middle classes, and for those people who cannot afford to buy a Mrs. Beaton or a Warren, but who can afford the three shillings for this." The Oxford English Dictionary recognised that, by the 1890s, Beaton's name was adopted as a term for an authority on all things domestic and culinary. The Robert Mondavi Institute for Wine and Food Science observed that it was probably found in more homes than any other cookery book, and was probably the most often consulted, in the years 1875–1914." A chapter of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's novel A Duet, with an occasional chorus 1899, is entitled, "'Concerning Mrs. Beaton." A character declares, "'Mrs. Beaton must have been the finest housekeeper in the world, therefore Mr. Beaton must have been the happiest and most comfortable man." Modern Mrs. Beaton has been described as the grandmother of modern domestic goddesses, like Nigella Lawson and Delia Smith, who saw, as Beaton did, the need to provide reassuring advice on culinary matters for the British middle classes. However, while Lawson and Smith insist that cooking can be easy, fun and uncomplicated, Beaton acknowledges the labor and skill required to cook well. The food writer and chef Gerard Baker tested and revised 220 of Beaton's recipes, and published the result as Mrs. Beaton, How to Cook 2011. For the book's 150th anniversary in 2011 the Royal Society of Chemistry planned to feature one of Beaton's recipes. Due to the financial climate at the time in wake of the Great Recession, the Society selected Beaton's Toast Sandwich, a dish that Beaton included to cater to the less well off. In 2012, the food economist for the British television period drama Downton Abbey described Beaton's book as an important guide for the food served in the series. Editions <laughs> <laughs> The book has appeared in many editions, including Notes <laughs>